One balloon caused panic, hysteria, and filled the news for weeks. The Chinese spy balloon got a full tour of the US's missile silos, air defenses, and other military installations. But this whole Chinese spy balloon scandal is just so much worse than it seems, and it marks a grave chapter in our new Cold War. A Cold War which could very soon escalate into a full-scale conflict which threatens human civilization. And now that it's been announced by the US government that the balloon may have carried an explosive payload, questions are being asked about the weakness of the US's slow response. And so what really happened here, and why is this story so important? Well, just a week before the incident occurred, things were looking bleak, but there was still some hope. You see, it all began with Trump's trade war, a series of sanctions and tariffs aimed at gaining the economic upper hand against China. But what was at first an economic conflict soon spread into other areas. For example, China's brutal subjugation of Hong Kong's democracy left a very bitter taste in the West mouth, as did new information about China's crimes against the Uyghurs. And when China upped their aggression against Taiwan, the US responded with threats of intervention and war, with Biden recently announcing that the US would protect Taiwan in the event of invasion and now some US generals are predicting a coming war in as little as two years. And so in a very short span of time, uneasy relations have shifted to a second Cold War, and things are heating up fast. And that's where things were at the beginning of 2023. But there was still some light at the end of the tunnel. The US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, was meant to attend a summit in China to cool relations. He stated that the meeting was the perfect opportunity to establish quote guardrails to prevent tensions from erupting into war. The CCP seemed welcoming of the opportunity to clear the air, with Xi Jinping ready to meet the American delegation over the weekend, and it was hoped that the two nations would soon simmer down this Cold War and skip straight to the peace summits. The meeting was meant to get the ball rolling on a possible de-escalation of both countries. But then just a few days before the planned visit, people in the US suddenly spotted an odd looking object in the sky. Claims that it was a UFO were quickly disproven after the US announced it was in fact a spy balloon, which they had been tracking since it was spotted over Alaska. Estimated flight patterns placed the blame squarely at China's door, and at first they were almost apologetic, although they did insist it was a weather balloon, which had flown off course. And whilst all of this was going on, the balloon just kept on going. First in Montana, it flew over the missile silos and nuclear sites, often fully visible from the ground. One site that the balloon exposed was the Maelstrom Air Force Base, which has around 150 intercontinental missile silos, as well as other vital military installations. And so people were just powerless as they watched the 60 meter tall Goliath cross the skies, hoovering up all of the US's military secrets. And so what did the government do? Well, they did nothing, silently watching the airspace be violated. So what was going on here? Well, first we can establish that this was clearly an intentional move. Balloons navigate by lowering and raising their altitude, letting them take advantage of wind direction to move. And so you see, the balloon had every opportunity to reverse its course, but instead, it flew directly towards the US. So why did China send the balloon in the first place? Well, here's a few possible motives. First is the obvious reason that it could gain valuable intel on the USA's defense capabilities. But beyond that, it was incredibly embarrassing for the US and the Biden administration. Every minute that the balloon stayed in the sky proved the US's unreadiness and indecision. It also could have been a demonstration of China's technological dominance, highlighting the weakness in what was thought to be the most powerful military in the world, surpassing the US's sophisticated defense system with a simple balloon. However, a third and much more sinister motive is that China wanted to sabotage any chance of reconciliation. I mean, why else would they take such a brazen and reckless move against the US? Whilst the US was mulling over these questions, the balloon just kept on going. After floating over Montana, it kept heading southeast over South Dakota and Nebraska. It was next sighted over Kansas, two days after the first sighting, and by now the balloon had crossed over half of the continental United States. And this was when the announcements started flowing in as both of the superpowers established their adversarial positions. And the worst news was yet about to hit. America's Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, cancelled the summit. He also called the spy balloon an irresponsible act on part of China. So Beijing responded by saying that the incident had been hyped up to smear China. The rhetoric was suddenly getting more and more aggressive. But even though the balloon had been gathering data for days, the Biden administration decided not to shoot it down. The reason they claimed was to avoid unnecessary damage. But the fact that it stayed in the sky for so long is an embarrassment on the US government's behalf. The US also claims that they had been tracking it since it was discovered over Alaska, so it was never an issue of time. So as you'd guess, Republicans were quick to launch into attacks on the Biden administration for their inaction. One even called it a catastrophic spectacle. But then the news came out that during the Trump administration, there had been three separate Chinese balloon incidents. Another had also entered US airspace before Biden was elected. Ex-Trump officials stated they were never briefed, but perhaps this was just an excuse to shift blame. But regardless of politics, all of this 
this made the US as a country look even more ridiculous. But it does beg the question of why this is the first time we're hearing about this. Does the US usually overlook these spy balloons, letting them crisscross the country at will? I mean, US officials have stated that the balloon can't get any more intel than a satellite could, but as they haven't analyzed the wreckage, they can't really know this for certain. And if this claim was actually true, why would China send the balloon in the first place? It seems unlikely that the balloon wouldn't give China any new information whatsoever, even after conducting a full trip over the USA. There are other less expensive ways of causing a diplomatic incident as well. China could have just cancelled the summit themselves. So obviously, there's much more to what's going on than we could possibly know at this point. It could have been the fact that this was spotted by regular people, causing the whole incident in the first place. And so once people were aware of its existence, the US hand was forced. Regardless, the US went from tolerating these spy balloons to cancelling diplomatic meetings and ramping up tensions, implying that the US government might have wanted an excuse to keep tensions high as well. A divided world could be of some geopolitical benefit. An increased threat from China means that the US's allies are much more likely to let the American military set up their bases, for example. However, the plot thickened when another high altitude balloon was spotted, this time hovering over Latin America. The US announced its presence on Friday, which was confirmed by Colombian officials a day later. China later claimed ownership for this one as well, but said that this one was yet another weather balloon that flew off course. And even with other evidence, it might have been a tiny bit plausible that the US balloon could simply have been a weather balloon. But now with two having been spotted at the exact same time, it makes the Chinese story just so much more far-fetched. Either China let two massive weather balloons drift off course in a matter of days, and they just happened to float off towards the Americas, or they're lying. The second balloon, as well as the previous instances that have only just come to light, both show a pattern in China's actions, with these balloons seeming to be a regular occurrence. Neither the US missed them all before, which would be incredibly embarrassing, or they willfully ignored them. But the debates about whether the balloon should be shot down were about to be ended, as on Friday night, the US made their plans to shoot down the balloon once it wasn't above the US mainland. So as the balloon kept heading east, drawing a path from Kansas to South Carolina, it would eventually show up the next morning. By this point, it covered a large portion of the US, making its way from the northwest all the way to the east coast. And so it was there off the coast of South Carolina that the US finally shot down the balloon. After other flights in the area were grounded, an F-22 jet flew up to the balloon's extremely high altitude and brought it down with a missile. The balloon then fell into a shallow section of the coast, where it could be retrieved without major difficulty. China feigned outrage in the statement, calling the US's response an overreaction and described the US as demonstrating indiscriminate use of force. But when the US shot down the balloon, they may have played straight into China's hands, as lots of people think the balloon's true purpose was to gain intel on ground installations like the military base we already mentioned. But it may also have been meant to gorge America's response to the balloon itself. Vital data could have been gained and transmitted based on how the balloon was intercepted and what signals were sent by the US jet. But a short time after the balloon was shot down, another new piece of information hit the news. It had already been established that the balloon could have carried a payload similar to a regional commercial airplane. US generals told reporters that they suspected the balloon may have carried enough explosives to self-detonate, destroying any information that could have been gained if it was shot down. Although now it seems like they either didn't activate or weren't present in the first place. Once the balloon had been shot down, the US quarantined the debris area in case of any unexploded ordnance, so it was definitely a possibility. The giant Chinese balloon that had been floating across parts of the United States has been shot down by an American fighter jet. A few days later, we got our first images of the wreckage as the US started the slow process of recovering it all. And once the remains were analyzed, we'll know a lot more about what the balloon's true purpose actually was. Experts in aerospace still don't know what to make either of the official line, saying that the truth probably lies somewhere between the middle of the two narratives. Of course, China will certainly deny any revelations from the US about the nature of the balloon, especially if it doesn't fit in with what was already said. And it's also doubtful that the US will expose whatever sensitive information they can take from the wreckage. If any of the components are out of the US's current technological abilities, it would be incredibly be embarrassing to admit. But there are some key things that would be revealed. If the balloon has any remote control functionality, then it would make the incident much worse for China. It would disprove their previous statements about the balloon's inability to navigate. Plus, it would prove a degree of intentionality on their part. Any component which suggests an ability to send back data to China remotely would also be controversial, adding credence to the argument that it was meant for espionage. But despite the fact that it's been blown up to bits, the balloon is still causing major diplomatic and domestic issues for the US, and will continue to do so for the following years. That in Biden's State of Union address, Biden was heckled and called a liar by many in American politics, and relations between the US and China have only dramatically degraded in the past few weeks, and shows no signs of improving whatsoever anytime soon. But this may be what China is counting on. 
The Chinese military modernization programs are set to finish in the next few years and the country will be somewhat recovered from their COVID problems. Remilitarization and growing hostilities with the West are all part of China's 2049 plan as well. Because now that China's become an economic giant and a growing world power, they need to consolidate their regional dominance. And the first target in China's crosshairs will undoubtedly be Taiwan. But they can't get anywhere without bumping up against the US and the current world order. Their first provocation could be first in a long string of escalations designed to upset this balance of power. It's very similar to an incident that happened in 1960, when a US spy plane was shot down over the USSR, with the things eventually escalating into the Cuban Missile Crisis just two years later. It had been hoped by the world that we could skip a brush with total annihilation this time around, but unfortunately history seems to be repeating itself once again, and if we're not careful, the fallout from the balloon could be the first chapter in our new Cold War, a war that the West isn't guaranteed to win.